I'm coming at you with another hypothetical situation. Okay, I love doing these types of videos and this is kind of the part two to the one that I uploaded last week. Last week I uploaded if I had to declutter one palette from each brand in my collection, what palette would it be? And now I'm doing the inverse. I'm gonna do if I had to only keep one palette from each brand in my collection, which palette would I keep? Listen, okay, these videos are not easy for me, okay? It pains me a little bit, but I did it. I did it for your viewing pleasure. So uh, let's, let's just do it, okay? Uh, I'm gonna link everything that I have on my face down below in the description box in case you're wondering. And I'm gonna go in alphabetical order with these brands and let's get to it. I will link the other video that I uploaded last week down in the description box. And uh, the stipulation for this video is the same as the one that I did already. I have to have at least two palettes from the brand, obviously, right? Because if I only have one palette from the brand, you know which one I'm keeping. And something else that I think is a little bit different when I was choosing these palettes for this video in particular, I'm not always choosing my favorite palette from the brand. I'm doing it strategically a lot of the times because this new hypothetical situation, I am going to have a much more curated collection. And a lot of times I chose palettes that are very unique to my collection, my new collection of one palette from each brand. I'll kind of explain as we go on what I mean by that, but what I'm saying is not necessarily the palette that I'm keeping from each brand is my favorite palette. Okay, stay with me, I'll explain. We're gonna start off with Adept. Now I did mention in the first version of this video, I only have two palettes from the brand. Okay, so I chose the one that I didn't declutter. And that one is the Heather Austin palette. I love this palette. Heather is one of my friends, so that also has something to do with it. I do remember when I first purchased this palette, oh my goodness, I was blown away at the shimmers. The shimmers in this palette are absolutely incredible super wet feeling and looking, multi-dimensional, some of the most impactful shimmers that I have in my collection. And I like these shimmers because they are just very unique, very, very unique. Um, and I do enjoy the mattes that she chose as well. There's only four mattes. I definitely would prefer to have more than four mattes in a palette, but I will say, I think the four mattes that she chose are absolutely beautiful. And it's really the shimmers that take my breath away with this. And like I said, Heather is one of my friends. So I, of course, want to keep this for the collaboration's sake as well. Anastasia Beverly Hills is the next brand. And I cheated a little bit, okay? I mean, I don't think it's a cheat, but some people may think it's a cheat. I chose the ABH Norvina Volume 5. I mean, technically this isn't ABH, it's the Norvina line, but it's owned by ABH. So that's the one I'm picking, okay? It's my video, I make the rules. Absolutely love this palette. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. The packaging is a little large and heavy, but I don't feel like it's bulky, like it's quite thin. And on the inside, we have a heavily purple palette. This is one of the reasons that I kept this is because I actually love this palette so much quality wise, color story wise, but I did not really choose any other purple palettes to keep in this hypothetical situation. So I would absolutely love to have a heavily purple palette. I love purples. I'm wearing purples on my eyes today, as you can see. One of my favorite colors to wear if I'm gonna wear color and the quality of these shadows is so good. The mattes are blendable, buttery. The shimmers are ultra smooth, traditional metallics. We don't have any multi-chromes or anything in here, which to me is totally fine. And we do also have a mix of some neutral tones in here that you can create a neutral look. There is a pressed glitter in here, which is definitely not my favorite thing in the world, but with such a large palette, I don't mind it that much. I love this palette and it is, I would say my favorite ABH palette. I guess if you would classify this as ABH, but I did also keep it just because it is like a purple palette, which I definitely need in my life. The next brand is Bella Beauté Bar. And I did mention this already in my last video that I do have quite a few palettes from the brand that I am currently testing. So between the two that I have, and actually technically I have tested a third palette that I have my final thoughts on, but this still stands. I would choose the recently de-influenced palette. I love this palette. I really like the theming. I know some people don't love it. I love it. I think it's so fun. A just different kind of take on a Halloween theme. I love the cover art. And then this color story is absolutely beautiful. We've got a bunch of warm tones, which I am a warm tone lover. We do have some purples in here. The quality of Bella Beauté Bar in both the shimmers and the mattes is 
spectacular. I especially love their mattes. I think that they are ultra buttery, ultra pigmented. I am actually wearing the Dead Roses palette on my eyes, although I bet you could get a similar look with this palette as well. Yeah, I mean, this palette is my favorite palette from the brand that I own right now that I've fully tested. Whenever I used this palette, the looks I got from it took my breath away. BH Cosmetics is the next brand, and this one was not hard at all when I did this in the past. I believe I chose this palette because it is my favorite palette from the brand, and I, I don't, I'm kind of maybe gonna regret saying this, but if I had to do a, a, a video where I could only keep like 10 palettes out of my entire collection, this would be one of them. I just love this palette. This is the Optimistic AF. No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. The quality of this is phenomenal. If you'd put this in high-end packaging and put like some high-end brands logo on it, I would believe you. I would believe you and I've got some warm tones, okay? Warm tone neutrals, some oranges, some yellows. Mattes are just the right pigment, buttery blendable. The shimmers are smooth and I love a smooth shimmer. Love, love, love a smooth shimmer. And these are just like the most wet looking smooth shimmers. They're just gorgeous. I love everything about this palette. I love how small it is. If you ever find this palette on sale at TJ Maxx or Marshalls or something and you like the color story, I would not, I would not tell you not to get it. Huh? Next up, we have one of my most favorite brands, which is Blend Bunny. And this is the palette that I've chosen in the past. This is, I d actually did a Blend Bunny palette ranking. It's been a while, but spoiler alert, this came in at number one. It is definitely my top five palettes if I only keep five palettes in my collection. Oh, the thought of that is terrifying. This would absolutely be one of the five and it is the Blends palette. This is the ultimate matte rainbow palette in my opinion. I love Blend Bunny's matte formula. I like their shimmers. They're not my favorite shimmer formula, but their mattes are just perfect. In my opinion, they're just perfect. Perfect pigmentation, perfect blendability, just so good. And if I have this in my collection, I probably don't need too many more mattes in my collection. Need, okay? Want, different story. Need, this has got a whole lot for me to work with. We have a white and a black, which I always love to have. We have some neutral browns and then a slew of different colors from light to deep that I can absolutely dip into. This is a necessity in my collection. If I ever lost this or whatever, I would 100% be repurchasing it. it. It's a need for me. By the way, as I'm going through these palettes, if I received them in PR, I'm sure I'm popping it up on the screen. I usually do it when I show the uh, close-ups and swatches. And if I do have a code with the brand, I'm sure I'm popping it up. You're seeing it clearly, so. All right, next up is ColourPop. And for ColourPop, I did not pick my number one ranked palette that I just literally just did a ColourPop ranking, I wanna say a month ago, but I did mention that there were two palettes that were pretty much tied for spot number one. This is the quote number two, but could be number one, listen, okay? And this is the Star Wars palette. The reason I chose this over the Limoncello palette, which was the other palette that I'm kind of hinting at, I've kept a lot of neutral palettes, a lot of neutral palettes, because I love neutrals. That is where my heart is. And this one to me is very unique in my collection. This is, in my opinion, one of the best palettes ColourPop has ever done in terms of quality, in terms of theming and packaging. I think they, they did a great job capturing the movie poster and making it into a quote wearable palette, meaning it's easy to create cohesive looks. I can create neutral looks because there are quite a lot of neutrals in here. I can create colorful looks. You guys know I'm not a huge blue lover, but I can create a blue look if I want to. And I do quite like these types of blues that are more like true blues. I don't love blues that lean green like teals or, or whatever. These types of blues I can, I can get down with. The quality of the shimmers is, I think, a little more stepped up from the usual ColourPop shimmer. The mattes are really, really nice. And I just kept this because I love the packaging, I love the theming, and I think it's just very unique. Next up, we have Cosmic Brushes. And I did mention in my last video that I only have two palettes left from the brand. I do have a third palette that I'm still testing. So of the two palettes that I have my final thoughts on, I am choosing the Muse. And actually, I would choose this one anyway. This palette is, so beautiful. I'm pretty sure this came in in my top 10 palettes of 2023. It is, in my opinion, a beautiful neutral palette with a twist. 
you can create neutral looks, you can create colorful looks, but these colors are a little more muted, which I really love. Just looking at this palette is so beautiful, just objectively looking at it. We've got pinks, we've got purples, we've got some greens, and I love the Cosmic Brushes formula. Their mattes are really, really nice, easy to use, but pigmented. And uh, I did mention this in my last video that the shimmers are, I don't feel like are talked about as much as their mattes, but I love the shimmer formula from this brand ultra smooth yet sparkly, not overly textured, not overly chunky. I don't love a chunky textured shimmer, honestly, but these, uh, these shimmers are really pretty and I just love this color story. Next up, we have Dee Dee Signature and of the two palettes that I have, I would be keeping the Jingle Bell Ruby palette. Um, honestly, this isn't my favorite color story, but of the two, the thing that is making me wanna keep it is this little section over here with those warm tone brownish reds. This little section for me is really, really pretty. I do like greens, but these two greens are a little bit more on that teal aqua side, which is not my favorite color to wear, but I still still enjoyed the looks that I got out of this side. In this palette, the metallics are for sure the standout. Very, very shiny, beautiful, multi-dimensional. The mattes are good. They're not my favorite mattes I've ever seen, but certainly good mattes. But overall, uh, this is a pretty palette. I do enjoy it. Our next brand is Dominique Cosmetics. Of the two palettes I have left, I used to own a lot more palettes from the brand, but uh, over the years, I've decluttered many of them but the one that I would choose to keep is the Latte palette. It's a stunningly just gorgeous. She's pretty, okay? I have not used this palette in such a long time. I need to pull it out and use it. This is heavily matte, which is my preference personally. We do have three really pretty neutral shimmers that go kind of light to deep, have a slight different undertone. I wanna swatch these shimmers. Oh yeah, see, they're pretty. They're definitely more of a traditional metallic which like I said before, I don't have a problem with. I like a traditional metallic. Yeah, they're really pretty. They're not like sparkly. They're not multi-chromes. They're not special, but I like me a standard shimmer. It, as long as it gives some shine to the lid, I like it. So yeah, I would be keeping this one and I, I should, I should pull this one out and use it again. Elf is the next brand and I do only own two palettes from the brand, but listen, I freaking love this palette. I've talked about it so much on this channel. You're probably sick of me talking about it, but it gives me fond memories, okay? Because it's no longer available. And this is the Chipotle palette, okay? This, to me, in my opinion, this palette is the best palette e.l.f. has ever released that I've personally tried. I think the quality is so good, both the mattes and the shimmers. The mattes are like, ultra buttery. They're not overly pigmented. You know, we're not going too crazy here saying that they're like indie shadows, but the shimmers in this are so pretty. They are a little bit more of that sparkly smooth formula. And I love this color story. It's heavily neutral. We've got some greens, but these greens are like warm tone greens with a yellow undertone, which I really, really love. Uh, it is kind of weird that it's trying to be kind of like the uh, the food line at Chipotle that if I think about it too much, it kind of grosses me out. But if I just focus on the eyeshadows, it's, it's really good. How many of you have this palette still? Let me know. Our next brand is another brand that I absolutely love and it is Fantasy Cosmetica. I think they do amazing, amazing collections super creative and super well executed. And my favorite palette from the brand is the one I decided to keep. And that is the Fighter palette. I, need I say more? It's a gorgeous neutral palette. We've got cool tone neutrals over here that even lean slightly more like blue. We have this beautiful mustard up here, which I think makes it just lean warmer if you wanna incorporate that. Fantasy Cosmetica shimmers, so good. So, so good. I like their mattes as well, but I definitely feel like their shimmers is where they shine. And I just love a little curated neutral palette where I can just pop one of these gorgeous shimmers all over my lid. And I definitely feel like all of these shimmers are very different and they'll transform the look to look completely different from the next look. So I appreciate that in such a small palette. Next up is Game Beauty. And this is another neutral palette. Okay, listen. It is what it is. This palette I love, and it is the Geo palette. 
love. I have three palettes from the brand and I have two of them from the Elemental Blast collection. And I personally think that the quality of this collection is stepped up from their past collections. And it's a neutral palette, leaning more warm. We do have this cool toned darker brown that you can kind of lean it a little cooler, but overall I would consider this more true neutral leaning warm, which is my favorite. The mattes are nice. They are not overly pigmented. They are definitely more of that silky texture when you touch it, when you feel it, not a lot of kick up in the pan. And these shimmers are also very smooth, which you know I love. There is a multi-chrome up here, which I think is stunningly beautiful. Did we need both of these shades? Not really. One is a matte, one is a satin. I personally didn't need both. Both work great in my inner corner, but nevertheless, I would definitely be keeping this one. All right, next up we have Glam Light and it's not a neutral palette, yes. Although I was debating between this one and another one, but again, I went more for the unique angle for this and I chose the Rick and Morty palette. This I feel like is a good companion to the blends from Blend Bunny because it is a rainbow palette, but it has a lot more neon tones, which listen, I may wanna tap into a neon matte. And also the shimmers in this are so beautiful. I love Glam Light shimmers, smooth yet sparkly. And I just love the variety of tones in here. And I really love this iridescent duochrome. All of the shimmers are very unique, would bring something to my new curated collection. And I just wanna have an arsenal of these like bright, colorful, more neon leaning shades. Our next brand is Gourmand Girls. And this was probably one of the harder brands for me to choose because I have all of the Doodles by the Bunny and Gourmand Girl collaboration palettes. And three of them honestly are interchangeable to me in terms of ranking, like they're just, so beautiful and complement each other so well. But in the moment of touching and feeling and opening them, I chose the Nightshade palette. <sighs> and I, I think what it is with this is I think back to the looks that I created with it. And there's some of my favorite looks that I did all of last year. <sighs> so pretty, so pretty. Again, we've got a lot of purple tones which I love. I love these two pops of like a Kelly green. I think that really brought something different to the palette. We can make it dark and smoky because we have this gray, we have this matte black, we have this darker metallic. And I really, again, love having an iridescent duochrome. This palette is so good. Now, in terms of formula from Gourmand Girls, their mattes are kind of what I described with, with Game Beauty where they are more on the silky side. They are more buildable. They're easy to work with. You do have to build them up though to get that full pigment. And then with the shimmers, there's a few different textures in here. I will say some of these more like chunky shimmers that are very textured are not my favorite type of formula, but they do have some more smooth metallics here as well. So would be keeping this one. Next up we have Hip Dot and I mentioned the Evanescence palette is the one that I would declutter. So naturally the only other palette I have from the brand is the Corn palette. This is the one I would keep uh, honestly because I, I love corn, like I like corn more than Evanescence, but apart from that, okay, I just prefer this color story obviously. <laughs> It's more neutral leaning and the Evanescence one is all blue. Although I did really enjoy the looks I got out of that Evanescence palette, I can't lie. But I really also enjoyed the looks I got out of this palette. Now, this is not a perfect palette for me. Um, I think if I had to only keep like 20 palettes in my collection, this would not make the top 20, probably not even the top 50, let's be real. Um, but because there are these two press glitters that definitely knocks it down for me. This duochrome here, I don't really love, but the mattes performed great and the shimmer that's here performed good. Like I actually like the mattes and shimmers from this palette, but I really also love the theming, the packaging. I thought it was very well executed. Next up we have Juvia's Place. I only have two palettes left from the brand that I actually have my final thoughts on. I've decluttered so many over the years. I do have a few that I've yet to use. We're not gonna talk about it, okay? But of the two that I have left, I want to keep the bronzed rustic. You guys already kind of probably can tell just by looking at it. I don't need to be a broken record. We have a warm tone neutral palette. I love how curated and small this is. I like that there are four mattes and two shimmers. The quality of these shadows is very good. I still think the Juvia's Place old school formula stands up. 
Like it still stands up. I, I really love their shimmers. More traditional metallics that are very smooth, really shiny. They're not sparkly. Um, and then the mattes are just really pretty. I love these two mattes, especially up here. This like yellowy orange and this like bright red. Brings something different to the palette. I really like it. So next up we have Lunar Beauty. This one probably should come as no surprise. If you watched my palette ranking for 2023, my yearly palette ranking, I chose the Full Fantasy palette. Technically this could be counted for Lunar Beauty or Laura Lee Los Angeles, although I didn't include Laura Lee Los Angeles in my last countdown, so I'm just not gonna count that brand itself in this one. But this to me is, I don't wanna say a perfect palette because one day when I create my own palette, it'll be a perfect palette. But I think this is nearly perfect for me. I could, again, if I kept five palettes in my collection, this would probably make the top five. Everything about this, I really enjoy. I love there's a matte black. I love that there's a matte cream for my inner corner. I love the selection of mattes. I love the selection of shimmers. This is just a really pretty user-friendly everyday slash could be more glam, depending on how you create your looks with it. I love that there is this addition of a duochrome. It just makes it really different and pretty. It's a blue to a purple. I love this palette. I don't know what else to say about it. It's, it's really nice. And the packaging is also really good. All right, the next brand is Natasha Denona. And I will say again, this was a more difficult brand for me to choose because I love so many of my Natasha Denona palettes, but I think when it comes down to it, the reason I'm choosing this, which is the mini nude, is A, I love the palette, and I love all the looks I get out of this. Every time I use it, they're just beautiful, understated, sophisticated, still impactful. I love how this is laid out. It is more warm leaning. But another reason why I'm keeping it is this is the eyeshadow palette I wore on my wedding day. I did get married in May of 2023. And so I wanna keep it for the memories as well. Like every time I look at this palette, I think of my wedding day and that brings me joy. And part of makeup for me is not just like what looks good on my eyes, but I, I want something to like bring me joy, give me memories. Like that is important to me as well. So uh, I don't know about you guys, but when I do like look at a palette or hold a palette, I, there is a memory attached. Like maybe the first time I purchased the palette, what I was thinking, or did I use it on a special occasion? That is like part of it for me. Listen, I love makeup, obviously. But that's why I would choose the mini nude. Next up, we have Nomad Cosmetics, one of my most favorite brands ever, 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 ever. You guys know that if you've been here before. And my number one favorite palette from the brand is the one that I would keep, and that is the Haunted Europe palette. Love the cover. And this is one of those situations, I remember exactly where I was when I received this, I remember opening it up and it was my very first palette from the brand. I was like, wow, this is so cool. Seeing the lenticular cover. This was back when not too many brands were doing this, honestly. And opening it up and seeing this color story, which I would consider this a neutral palette with a twist. It's grungy, it's just stunning. I think quality wise, Nomad has improved their quality in both their mattes and shimmers, but I still really, really love this palette. I don't think this is bad quality by any means. I just feel that the shimmers and the mattes are a little bit softer than they are now. And I love this palette. It is my favorite Nomad palette. It holds special memories to me. And this was like one of my first indie palettes I ever bought. And I thought, wow, like this is incredible. This is incredible. Next up we have Odin's Eye. This was another brand that like I could, it's very difficult to choose. I love so many of my Odin's Eye palettes, but listen, okay, I have to keep one blue palette. I have to keep one because I may want to do a blue look every once in a while. And for me, my favorite blue palette, or it's not all blue, but heavily blue. My favorite blue palette in my collection is the Christmas Eve palette. It's so unique and beautiful. It is so unique and beautiful to me. I love the blue tones that are here. Again, they're more like true blues. They're not green leaning. I, I, can, I can get down with it, but there are also a mix of other tones in here. We have some neutrals, we have a green. I can create a cool tone neutral look. I can create more of a gold leaning look. And this to me is just a very unique palette in my collection. And if I did wanna do a blue look, this is probably the palette I would be reaching for. Next up, we have Pat McGrath. And I did mention last time, I only own two palettes from the brand. This is not a brand I talk about on my channel very often, just because I don't purchase from Pat McGrath hardly ever. And I did purchase one of her quads on sale. And this is the... Blue 
Blitz Astral Quad in Iconic Illumination. So uh, I will say the packaging on this is very luxurious. It's very nice. It's heavy. It has a magnetic closure. I, I definitely feel like this one compared to the one I talked about last time, which was one of her large holiday palettes. I definitely can see the difference in terms of quality of packaging. And I know so many people love the brand and say that her big mothership palettes are where it's at. I just would rather spend my money on like indie palettes. I don't know. I don't really have an interest in purchasing one of her mothership palettes. They're so expensive. She's increased the price as well, I think to a hundred and something. One of her, her new palette is, is very expensive. I don't want to spend that much money, but I do think this is pretty. All four of them are her Blitz Astral formula, which is her special formula. I don't know if I have swatches of this, so I'm just gonna do some live swatches right now with you. I will say they're very pretty, especially this one here, which is this top top one here. It's very, very sparkly. It's pretty. Like, can you see that? It's more of like a topper. Then we have this one, which is more of like a cranberry. It's pretty. Honestly, I have indie shadows that I think are prettier, but that's neither here nor there. This one is like a deeper neutral slash cool tone brown, pretty. And then we have this gold, which I think the gold is really pretty. But the two in the middle, honestly, they're fine. Like I don't really feel that they're overly special, especially for the price. Don't cancel me, okay? And if you disagree with me, that is totally okay. I want you to buy the makeup you wanna buy. And for me, I would keep this just because I prefer how small this is. I like these formulas. The other palette I have is her big palette. It doesn't have any of the special shades. Uh, it's a good palette. So I guess I'd keep it between the two. All right, next up we have Patrick Ta and I only own two palettes from the brand. And the one that I would be keeping is the Major Dimension 2, which is the Rose palette. Oh, this palette is so beautiful. And I did only keep a couple of like pinky mauve color stories, which honestly, I love me a pinky mauve look. I'm getting very much into it. And the quality of these shadows is very good. I definitely feel like his quality stepped up with this palette from his first palette. I love the gradient of light to deep in the mattes. I love the different selection of shimmers. And I will say these shimmers are improved, I think over the first palette. The first palette, the shimmers were definitely drier, uh, more flaky texture. And some of these are a flaky texture, but I feel they have a little more moisture to them. And I like that with these shimmers, they are not all rosy tones. You have like a gold, you have a duochrome and they're just really pretty more of like a red rosy tone. And then I really enjoy his cream shadows. So that's why I'd be keeping this one. All right, we're down to our last little stack of palettes. So we have Shroud Cosmetics next. I only own two palettes from the brand. Both of them are collaborations with Betty Jean, who is one of my friends. So I, I said last time, I, I hate to have to declutter one of her palettes. I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to. But good news is I get to keep one of her palettes. And the one of the two that I own that I would keep is the Halloween palette. Uh, I really love the packaging. I love the theming and I really, really enjoy this color story. Uh, it is a little bit more warm leaning. We've got oranges, which I love. We've got greens that are definitely more warm toned greens, which I love. I love this mustardy shade. It makes it super grungy. I love this deep dark green. And these shimmers are so beautiful. Some of them are multi-chromes. I really enjoy Shroud's shimmer formula again, smooth, very smooth, yet shiny and sparkly. So I would be keeping Halloween. All right, next up we have Sigma. And this was a no brainer for me. Uh, this did also end up very high in my countdown for 2023. And that is the new Mod Mini. I freaking love this palette. I love how tiny and skinny and packable it is. And I love the shades inside. I think this is a perfectly curated and balanced small palette. We have four mattes that vary in depth. I can use this one in my inner corner. I can use this to deepen up in my outer corner. And then again, all three of the shimmers are different. It's still a monochromatic palette, but you can get di slightly different looks depending on how you spin it. I just love this layout, the color story, and I really enjoy Sigma's formula. It's very user-friendly. It's dependable. The mattes are really nice. The shimmers aren't overly wet looking, aren't overly sparkly. They're just a really pretty traditional metallic. 
and I really, really like this palette. Next up, we have Simply Posh Cosmetics, and this is a palette that I don't think it's my favorite quality palette from the brand, but the color story gets me. It just, it has a choke hold on me. So this is the one I would be keeping, which is the Citrus Punch. Although they did say that they are releasing this palette in their updated formula. I think I will be purchasing it. If they don't send it to me, I'm gonna purchase it because I love this color story for summer. It is so, so beautiful. Again, it's more warm leaning, which I love. And I really love how they lay out their palettes where you have a lighter matte up top, a shimmer in the middle and a deeper matte on the bottom. So you can create a monochromatic look just by sticking to the three shadows that are here. Of course, you can mix it up. I really, really like their formula. Typically their mattes are good pigment level and their shimmers are usually all duochromes. But I will say that the shades in this palette are definitely more hard pressed than their other palettes. So I'm hoping with this change of formula that they are going to improve that and I, I will be keeping my eye out for it. Okay, Unearthly. This was the number one brand that I had the hardest time with. I could have picked so many palettes to keep and this is a brand like, I don't think I will ever declutter any of the palettes from the brand. Even if I don't like the palette, I'm keeping it, okay? It is what it is. But I have to say, I, I would keep the original Fall Magic. And I think because for whatever reason, it's because it's this version of it is gone forever. It's never coming back. So that's part of it. But also because I, I love this palette. I love this palette. This is another one of those palettes that's like almost a perfect palette for me. The quality of the mattes is really good. I always love Unearthly mattes. I think since the beginning of I've ever tried them, their matte formula has been great. This is from a lab that they no longer work with. I don't know what it is about this palette, but the shimmers in this palette are very unique to this specific palette. I don't feel like of any of the other Unearthly palettes that I own, there is a shimmer formula quite like this. But I will say their new shimmer formula that they have, I think is so good. Um, it's just different than this. I think they're, this one and the new formula, really good. They're just very creamy to the touch super shiny. We have one standard shimmer and then all the rest of these are duochromes. This is just like my perfect fall palette. It's like muted, just like the tones of the leaves on the cover. And I, I don't wanna ever part with this one, I don't. All right, we're down to the last two brands. We've got two W brands. So we have What's Up Beauty. And I did mention in my last video that honestly, like I love all three of the palettes I have from the brand. I think that they're all really good. And I don't feel that they're all that, that different from each other. They are really mostly neutral mattes with shimmers for the pops of color. But I would choose to keep the Desert Monsoon palette. This is the very first palette that they ever came out with. It's the second palette that I ever owned from the brand. But I just love the selection of shimmers on here. You get ready to be stunned, but I love this blue shimmer. It is like a bluish purple shimmer. I think adding that just like really made this whole color story pop a little bit more. I really like, again, the selection of more neutral mattes with this pop of like a mauvey pink. And all of these shimmers are so stunning. I really enjoy the shimmer formula from What's Up Beauty. Very sparkly, very impactful. Their mattes are very easy to use, more of that silky texture. And I really like this palette. I think it's really pretty. And then we have Wicked Widow Beauty as our last brand. And I was kind of hemming and hawing between two palettes. But again, I, I picked this one more for the unique aspect of it. And that is the Graveyard Smash palette. This was their Halloween release for 2023. I love me a Halloween palette. I love me a spooky theme. Halloween is my favorite holiday ever. And so I love the cover art. I love the theming. I love how small this is. And then on the inside, we have this gorgeous grungy color story. I love this like reddish orange matte, this grungy green, this deep purple, and this pistachio green. I think the, sh the selection of mattes is very, very nice. And the shimmers in this palette are amazing. Very wet to the touch, very impactful. If you like a very, very impactful shimmer, I think you would really like this palette. I really like it. All right, and that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Woo, I've been filming for a while, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go make some lunch and uh, I hope you're having a great day. Let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with me keeping these palettes? Let me know if you've tried these palettes. Let me know if you haven't tried these palettes. Are there any of these palettes on your wish list? Anything you're thinking, let me know down in the comments because I love hearing from you. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot when you do that. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing before you leave. I do upload videos weekly and I'd love to see you back on my channel again. I wanna thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.